Hatchet 3 stars Danielle Harris, Caroline Williams, Zach Galligan, Derek Mears, Kane Hodder, and is directed by BJ McDowell. What, no Adam Green? Don't worry, Adam Green is still on writing detail and is one of the executive producers of the film. Hatchet 3 sticks to the tradition that they've created at this point by picking up right after the last one ends. Stop doing that! Mary Beth Dunstan basically eviscerates his body and heads to the police station with a shotgun in his scalp in tow. That's pretty brutal. Caroline Williams, who plays the sheriff's wife, comes to Mary Beth and says that she may have a way to put Victor Crowley to rest for good. That's really where our story starts. Most of you will probably know Caroline Williams as Stretch from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Dog will hunt! Just for you, Lee. I know that she's done a lot of work on television, but seeing her back in a horror film, especially a southern fried slasher, was awesome to me. Now that we're on the casting, they killed it this time with the cameos. Legendary horror actors and even some from the previous installments are in Hatchet 3. I could tell that they went as hard as they could on casting because these cameos are ridiculous. As I said, we get Caroline Williams, but we also get horror legend Sid Hag. Kane Hodder's fellow Jason and Derek Mears. Sean Whalen, who I love in People Under the Stairs. They even got Zach Galligan, who was Billy in Gremlins. One of the most interesting cameos was Riley Vanderbilt, who played Doherty. I think it was Doherty. Was it Dottie? Daughtry. I, I don't know. Interestingly enough, she played young Victor Crowley in the last two films. If you're a fan of the franchise, you know what I'm about to say. My boy Perry Shen is back once again, and this time he's playing Andrew, a paramedic. There is one more cameo, but I'm not going to ruin it for you. If you love this series, then you're going to love this cameo. It's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, we're in the spot Kevlar. We have Derek Mears. In the other corner, we're in the blood-stained overalls and rocking a sweet skullet. He is the fifth of Honey Island Swamp. Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Crowley. Guys, we get my favorite Jason throwing down with Victor Crowley. SWAT leader versus Victor Crowley. More importantly, we get Jason versus Jason. It's badass and I loved it. As far as Victor Crowley himself goes, yeah, he's a badass. This is probably the best he's looked in the entire series. I think his hair looks the best in this one. Yes, I know I'm talking about his hair, but even Kane Hodder himself has said this is the best the hair has looked in the whole franchise. If you watch the Raising Kane featurette on the Part 3 Blu-ray, you know that they actually used the hair from Part 2 for the beginning of Part 3. Now that is an attention to detail. They don't necessarily go for broke with the kills, but the body count is high. Hi. There's one scene in particular where he's just brutalizing people. The only thing I can really compare it to is the rave scene from Freddy vs. Jason. If I can give you guys a negative with Hatchet 3, I would say that it's how little we get of Daniel Harris's character, Mary Beth. I could have used a little bit more of her. Not that much, but I'll take it. Seriously though, she doesn't really have much to do in this movie. I would have rather seen her tearing it up in the swamp with Derek Mears rather than sitting in the back of a cop car. I'm not kidding guys, most of her scenes in this film are of her sitting in the back of a cop car. In the end guys, I'm gonna have to give Hatchet 3 a hmm. It's a great part 3, it really is, don't get me wrong. Yet again, they gave us more background and lore that I loved in the first two. Kane Hodder as Victor Crowley was even more brutal in his final installment. I've said it before, and I'll say it one more time. Jason fights Jason. That's enough reason alone to check this one out. I will say that limiting the time of Danielle Harris's main character in Mary Beth kind of took me out of the film a little bit. I think that having her character out in the swamps just a little bit earlier in the film would have gotten this one to a metal claw. All right, guys, that has been my review of Hatchet 3. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments down below. Also, guys, let me know what your favorite Hatchet movie is. Mine has to be the first one. I don't know. I just love this one. I laugh every time. And this one's still as brutal as the rest. That's it for Hatchet, guys. I have completed the trilogy. If you guys want to see my next Cavern of Terror review or any of my other content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's the best way to check it out. What's my next Cavern of Terror review going to be? Don't worry. I'll let you guys know right now. Final Destination.
It's okay to be afraid of everything in your house after you're done watching a movie, right? Stay tuned for my Die Hard retrospective in my From the Shelf series. I know From the Shelf has been gone for a while, but I'm getting ready to roll out some new videos in that series very soon. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd because you know I have them. But most importantly, guys, this has been Zack vs. the Blu-ray Mountain. Stay metal, my friends. Three, two, one.